Welcome to the first in a series of tutorial videos intended to help you build realistic railways in city skylines. These videos will both help you understand some basic railway engineering concepts and give you the skills you need to apply that knowledge to city skylines. Much of the content of this series will rely on the use of mods, custom assets, and in some cases, advanced techniques. However, the ideas introduced and the demonstration of good practice can be applied regardless of how or on what type of system you use to play. Throughout the series, you'll hear me refer to things like double or single tracks, two ways and one ways, and something that may be completely new to you, nodeless tracks. These are all different track configurations in the railway collection, and when you add different types of ballast, sleepers, and options for catenary wires, they can all be quite daunting. To demonstrate these, the railway collection uses a standard set of icons. First up, everything starts with the tracks. The material beneath the tracks is known as the ballast. Sitting on top of the ballast are the sleepers. You have a choice of either gravel or wood. The next option is whether or not you want overhead electrification. If you do, make sure the network you select includes this lightning bolt icon. Next up is the direction of tracks. This one's pretty self-explanatory, but it is useful to know, especially when building complex railways. Finally, the important one, noded or nodeless track. I'll cover this in more detail in a later episode, but for now, just know that noded is the standard behavior you're used to from vanilla railways. Nodeless is more complicated, but also more powerful. Today's episode will show you how to make smooth transitions between standard two-way double tracks and pairs of single one-way tracks. You might be asking, why is this important? Well, if you want to create smooth junctions, it is critical that you're using single track. Otherwise, you simply can't gain the level of control over your railways that you need to create realistic track geometry, like I'm demonstrating here. Today's video will focus on showing you how to make simple yet realistic connections between those two track types so you can spend your time focusing on building your city rather than unnecessarily duplicating tracks. There are two ways to do this, and I'm going to show them to you on each side of this station over here. This is a plain, empty station with an island platform configuration, just perfect for our demonstration today. I'll connect things on this side using the more traditional way, which uses move it and a combination of single tracks, nodeless single tracks, and the regular noded two-way double track railways. On this side, I'll show you how to achieve the same effect using node controller, which you might call a more modern approach to things. I'm going to create a small section of track here, including a small section of straight track, as any transition is easier on straight track than it is on a curve. I'm using a hard right angle here, otherwise a segment that already exists may merge with the segment I've just created. Building it at sharp angles stops this, but you can easily realign it by holding Alt on your keyboard while using Move It. I'm going to use this section of double track as a guide, so that when I build my pair of single tracks, I can be confident that they will align to the same dimensions as a regular double track railway. Using Move It, align the edges of the sleepers at each node so that the nodeless segments are aligned with the double track. And once this is done, select the small segment of noted track, hold Alt, and then snap. Once we remove the double track, we have a really nice, perfectly straight and level area of track. What I refer to as a traditional method is made by joining a noted two-way double track with a pair of noted one-way single tracks to a pair of nodeless one-way single tracks. Once you've done this, you can use the Surface Painter mod to tidy up some of the texture glitches. And when you're ready, you can make some really nice, smooth segments of track between the transition we've just created and the tracks that form part of the station. Now, let's take a look at Node Controller. To do this, we need to work with nodeless track, specifically the two-way double track nodeless railway. I'll align the heights before I connect this segment with the station using one-way single track nodeless railways. While at the moment it doesn't look great, thanks to Node Controller, this becomes very easy to fix. Simply open the Node Controller mod and hold the Alt key to enable the selection of segment ends. 
select one of the tracks and we'll use the POS or position values to shift the corners of the segment end two meters to the side. You can see now that there is a perfect connection between these two tracks. Now again holding Alt, select the opposite track and move the position values two meters in the opposite direction. Now that you have a clean junction between the single and double tracks, it's time to make some smooth connections between the station and what we've just created. To summarize, for the modern method using Node Controller, you need to connect a noded two-way double track with a nodeless two-way double track to a pair of nodeless one-way single tracks and then offset the corners of each segment by two meters in opposite directions. With each of these techniques, you'll be able to introduce far more flexibility into the railway builds in your cities. And I really look forward to seeing what you create. This has been the first in a series of tutorial videos teaching you how to get the most out of the railway collection and build more realistic railways and railway infrastructure in your cities. My sincere thanks to everyone who contributed amazing footage of their builds for me to use in the opening and closing titles, and to those who provided technical advice on the methods that I've described. You can find links to more of their incredible work in the description below. I would love your feedback, questions, or suggestions on what areas to cover in future episodes. Feel free to grab me on Twitter or leave a comment below.